home to a little over 2 million people. Docked in the Middle East, it is not too hard to tell the beauty in the quality of life here. Few weeks from now, they get a very unique opportunity to host the FIFA World Cup, the first in the Middle East, yes. Qatar 2022. I've come here to take you on a tour to some of the interesting places you find here in Doha and the venues as well but most importantly the ones the Black Stars will be using during the group stage of this particular tournament. The clock is ticking down. Join me. iconic stories of this Qatar 2022 World Cup is a stadium that I am currently in. Stadium 974, made of shipping containers. It speaks of the ingenuity you see all around in Qatar.
Argentina and also Poland will be playing one of the matches here. So Argentina will be facing off against Poland here at the stadium 974. Who knows? Maybe Lionel Messi. Argentina's Lionel Messi will be sitting here. You never know. The stadium bowl seating avoids the need for air conditioning as it is designed to be naturally ventilated. Much of the stadium's structure is made from recycled steel. The stadium's water efficiency methods ensure it reduces water use by 40% compared to a conventional stadium development. So I'm currently here at the Education City Stadium and this is one of the venues for the Black Stars Group Games. The Education City Stadium with a capacity of 40,000 is set to host matches up to and including the quarter-final stage during Qatar 2022. The stadium's modular upper tier will be removed with the seats donated to a country which lacks sporting infrastructure. The stadium will become a sporting hub for the local community, including students and faculty. The facade of the stadium features triangles that form complex diamond-like geometrical patterns which appear to change color with the sun's movement across the sky. Like diamonds, the stadium's design represents quality, durability and resilience and will become something to be treasured both for the memories it holds and its future value to the country. Fans will be able to reach the venue using the Doha Metro Green Line. Education City Stadium is located just 500 meters from the stadium. So this whole area that is Education City Stadium, the home of Qatar Foundation for Education, Science and Community Development, buzzes with invention and a determination to make the FIFA World Cup 2022 a catalyst for social and human development. The precinct already features Education City Golf Club, which hosted the Qatar Masters, a European tour event, for the first time in 2022. During Legacy Mode, the precinct will feature a retail area, conference centers, health and wellness facility and two schools. The stadium is the first Qatar 2022 tournament venue to achieve a 5-star design and build rating from the Global Sustainability Assessment System. Education City Stadium will feature state-of-the-art cooling technology for the benefit of fans, players and officials. So designed by the famous Zaha Hadid, the beautiful 40,000 capacity Al Janouk Stadium that you see behind me is a jewel in the southeast. Let's go inside and take a look. The Al Janoub Stadium with a capacity of 40,000 
is set to host matches up to and including the round of 16 stage during Qatar 2022. It is home of Al Wakra Sports Club and thanks to its modular nature, the stadium's capacity will be reduced to 20,000 after the tournament with the excess seats from the upper tier being donated to football development projects overseas. A number of Qatari companies have been involved with the delivery of the Al Janoub Stadium. More than 50% of the investments to build the stadium has supported the Qatari economy. The design is inspired by the sales of the traditional dough boats in tribute to Al Wakra's seafaring past. An innovative cooling system and retractable roof means the stadium will be used all year round. The stadium was designed by Aircom and Zaha Hadid Architects. The dough, original dough, has an abel, a, a sail, okay? And when the wind push the sail and inflate, that is the, the, the shape that you appreciate on the roof of the stadium. If you see this line on the, on the back of the, of the sail when it's inflating, it represents the shape of the stadium, okay? And this is moving because the wind, okay? But this, you know, the wooden, the wooden boat, when it's moving, the, the, the wave around the boat, okay, this wave also reflected also in the facade, in the six sides of the facade also represent the wave around the door. And as I told you, in the center of the field of play, if we put this boat upside down, the structure is appreciated on the top. The turf used for the playing surface was grown at the Al Janoub Stadium Precinct Turf Farm. The pitch was laid for the first time in March 2019 in just 9 hours and 15 minutes. Al Janoub Stadium will benefit from innovative cooling technology that was designed and delivered by Qatari experts. A heating, ventilation and air conditioning system will cool the spectator areas to approximately 18 degrees Celsius using underseat supply terminals at low velocities. More than 100 air ventilator units split evenly between the lower and upper tiers will serve the stadium bowl. The cooling source for the stadium bowl system will be chilled water from a district cooling system. The maximum speed flow at spectator level will be less than 1 meter per second. The pitch cooling system comprises 8 air handling units, 4 on the east side and 4 on the west. The minimum pitch temperatures will be 20 degrees Celsius. The maximum speed flow at pitch level will be less than 0.5 meter per second. We provide cooling only where we need the cooling. We don't provide cooling all the ball of the stadium. For example, in the spectator, we have fresh air coming below the seat. And how the temperature work, the air works like a liquid, mechanical fluid. We have by different density, like a oil, a, a oil and water, Fresh air try to be down and hot air try to be up. With this principle, we keep the fresh air moving always around the fans. We have an suction in the top and we create a loop around the spectator with fresh air and we don't need to provide cooling in the top. We don't need it. We don't need to provide cooling in the center of the field of play. Same for the players. Al Janoub Park within the precinct opened in February 2020. It features cycling and running trucks, children's play areas and other green spaces. Eventually, there will be a marketplace and community facilities including a mosque and school.
All this heat will be donated and to come to who need sport facilities. But when we remove the upper tier, that is easy to remove because it's a steel structure and everything is bolted, uh, you will appreciate the glass facade. And remember when I explain you the glass facade that we have the Islamic pattern there, that means that you will have the glass providing light to inside of the stadium and will look a bit really nice, you know, the, the stadium. The Al Janoub Stadium is served by a network of new expressways and roads which provide easy access to residents and visitors to both Awakra and Doha and will be served by shuttle bus services on March days. The precinct has dedicated bus stops, interconnected cycling paths and safe pedestrian routes. Away from the venues of the Black Stars' group stage marches, the opening and closing ceremony venues will attract millions of fans from across the globe. Featuring a retraceable roof, this beauty, the Albite Stadium, will host the opening match of Qatar 2022 World Cup. Albaid Stadium, with a capacity of 60,000, is set to host the opening match of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, along with numerous other matches up to and including the semi-final stage. The modular apartheid will be removed after the tournament, with the seats being repurposed to create sporting facilities in Qatar and overseas. After Qatar 2022, the upper concourse of the stadium will be converted into various facilities. The skybox level will be turned into a five-star hotel, while a shopping center, food court, gym, multi-purpose hall will be incorporated into the stadium building. The leading sports medicine hospital will open. The stadium takes its name from Bayt al-Ashar, which were tents historically used by nomadic peoples in Qatar and the Gulf region. The design honors Qatar's past and present while keeping one eye on the future of the community. Covering an area larger than 30 football pitches, Al Bayit Park boasts vast green spaces with play areas and exercise stations along with tracks for running, cycling, horse riding and camel riding. In addition, the precinct is home to multi-sport grounds which are also open to the public. The stadium was awarded a 5-star rating for its design and construction from the Global Sustainability Assessment System along with a Class A rating for its construction process and a Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio Compliance Certificate. Now nestled in the newly constructed city of Lucille, the Lucille Stadium is where it all ends with the finals being played here. The Luzail Stadium with a capacity of 80,000 is Qatar's biggest tournament venue and will host the final along with matches during every stage of Qatar 2022. The current plan of Luzail Stadium is to study the modification of the venue's interior space to host a mixture of civic facilities. After 2022, the venue could feature affordable housing units, shops, food outlets, health clinics and even a school. The upper tier could be repurposed into outdoor terraces for new homes and a community football pitch potentially built within the premises. To make way for these new amenities, some tournament installations will have to be removed. Any material removed will be preserved and, where possible, 
repurposed and donated to communities which require sporting infrastructure. The stadium's design is inspired by the interplay of light and shadow that characterizes the Fanar Lantern. Luzael's shape and facade echo the intricate decorative motives on bowls and other vessels characteristic of the golden age of art and craftsmanship in the Arab and Islamic world. The stadium will be served by the Doha Metro Red Line. Drivers will be able to access the stadium by using the Al Khor Expressway. There will be a number of park and ride facilities in close proximity to the stadium. After 2022, people will be able to reach the facility by using the Lusail Light Rail Tram. Sustainability building practices have been used throughout the construction. Recycled water is used to irrigate plants around the stadium. Water-efficient fixtures and leak detection systems are operational. The construction site conserves 40% more fresh water than conventional stadium developments. Luzail Stadium is on track to receive a 4-star rating from the Global Sustainability Assessment System. So, with so much already done, Qatar is ready to host the rest of the world. This may well turn out to be the greatest World Cup ever in the words of FIFA President Gianni Infantino. The world is indeed better together. See you there.